Seen Mr. Brody tonight? Mr. Brody, why ask me? I was wondering if I could speak to him without having my head bitten off. Well, he's not here yet. Thanks. Well, you might leave the door open. I'm bringing the orders up to the club in a minute. With pleasure. Well, that's what she told me. No. Oh, yes. That was a good one. It reminds me of the one about the dams on the bicycle. Oh, man, you're not going to tell that one all over again? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Well, now can we go back to that question I raised? Yes, let's get back to business. What about Gibson's suggestion to appoint a school physician? What do you think of my idea, Dr. Norrie? Uh, oh, a school physician. Mm, quite a modern idea. That'll cost us a pretty penny, school physician. Try not to look at it from the banker's point of view, Foyle. After all, it concerns the health of the future generations. We never had a school physician, and look at me. I think the whole matter boils down to extra expenses. And we simply can't afford it with the income tax rising higher and higher every day. Thanks, Nancy. Do you know Mr. Gladstone has asked the house for another penny in the pound? What a robbery. However, let's wait and hear what Brody will have to say about a school physician. Oh, Brody, Brody, this and Brody, that. Can nothing ever happen in this town without Brody having a say in it? What is he anyway? Only a hatter? Not even a good one? Oh, sorry. Come, come, Grierson. Well, it's true, isn't it? No, let me go. Somebody might see us. Is that all I get after the fine present I gave you? I didn't ask you to give it to me. Besides, they're talking about us already. Who? Grierson. What's he been saying? It isn't what he says, it's the way he says it. That slimy tongue of his, I'd like to tear it from his mouth. No, don't say anything if you want to make it worse. Aye. You leave him to me. I've had him as a next door neighbor at the shop for 20 years. That's 20 years of putting up with his pride and vanity. Uh, another time, Grierson. Yeah, about that carriage of yours, Provost. Good evening, Brody. <laughs> Come oh, away Brody. in, Brody. Come away oh, in. I want to make you a business proposition. I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. A far-seeing, practical, enterprising man like you. If you desire a business appointment, come and see me at my office. What do you say, Brody? They want to appoint a school physician. <laughs> school physician? But why? The idea is to appoint a doctor to have permanent charge of the health of my pupils. Aye. Aye. Young Dr. Rennick has been suggested for the... Rennick! Man, you must be daft. I expected you to be the last to say that. To the good of boys like your own that I'm trying to get this and thing... And what is wrong with my boy? He's anemic. Rubbish. And over... When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. I disagree with the whole thing. It's ridiculous. And as to the health of my boy, you can leave that to me. There goes another good idea. Thank you. Now, which one's the pledge? You? Good <laughs> evening. It's a nice drop of gin, dearie. What? Huh. There it is. Just as best as ever. What are you doing here? Why aren't you in Glasgow? Because I'm in Leavenford. <laughs> Wait till I get you a drink. That's uh, better. Don't forget my gin, dearie. Got a holiday? Well, maybe yes and maybe no. I'm not sure that I'm going to go back. You see, they don't really appreciate me where I come from. I don't drown it. I know how you like it. How much of the needful do you want for this? The written arms will pay for that one. Well, that's good because... Well, because nobody else can. Broke again, eh? Oh, so that's why I'm honoured with a call. Oh, no, that's not fair, Nancy. 
I've come to leave him for... If you say it's because you were pining after me, I'll box your ears, my boy. Well, I've come to leave him for because... because I haven't got the fare to get any further. Now, you can't get round me like that. Oh, now, it's no good scolding me, Nancy. You know that you're the only girl that I've ever really loved. Well, why don't you get a job in leaving for... Well, what am I going to do for money while I'm waiting? Besides, good jobs don't exactly grow on gooseberry bushes. I've got an idea. I'll see that you're all right. Be back in two ticks. I asked her for a gin. She wouldn't give it to me. Hey, what is it? What's the matter? It's all right. There isn't anyone to see you. I just wanted to tell you that I can't see you tonight after all. Why? And I'm afraid there'll be nothing doing for quite some time. My stepbrother's come back from Glasgow. Your stepmother? Well, can you not get rid of him? You see how I can. You see, he hasn't got a job and he wants to stick around with me all the time. Well, what does he do? Oh, he does everything. He's a marvelous salesman. Mm -hmm. Is that why he's not got a job? <laughs> yeah, what is it? <laughs> no, nothing. It's What's on your mind? You won't laugh at me. Hmm? Fine. Well, supposing... No, you, you couldn't do it really, but... Supposing he was in your shop, then you'd always know where he was. Aye, then we'd be safe from any kind of surprise. Hmm. Ah, you're a bad lass. <laughs> no, you couldn't possibly do it. For why? Tell him to come and see me at my office. Hmm. Angus, don't make such a noise. Oh, what a state you're in. Is father home? No, the doctor's up with mother. She was? No. We just had to find out why she's always having those pains, that's all. But this isn't Dr. Lawrence's hat. He wouldn't be seen dead in an old thing like this. No, it's Dr. Rennick's. Here, I'll, I'll give it a brush for him. That's grand. But what made Father send for Dr. Rennick? Oh, he doesn't know anything about it. I sent for him. Without Father's permission? You must have gone there. Well, I asked him to be here at three for certain, but he was over two hours late. I'd like to have had a closer look at you, Mrs. Brodie, but... Oh, some other time, Doctor, perhaps, but... Better still, I'll come along and see you one of these days.